Well, hello everyone. I'm Tyler Cressman, and welcome to the Cressman Conversation. Today, we're going to start with a little bit of housekeeping. Borrow a phrase from Sam Harris there. The podcast I put out last week, or I guess earlier this week, about opening schools. I want to clarify one point. Uh, the something that was pointed out to me. So my opinion on opening schools is that we should do it. And I said that we should do it and we can consider ways to safely socially distance kids. It's not without the, it's not beyond our grasp to figure out how to do that safely and effectively. And the reason I have that opinion is because that's what all the experts are saying right now. And that's what all the science, the direction that the science points us in. Now, if that evidence changes going forward, then we change our opinions with the science. So to say today that I am very confident that we should open schools, that's based on all the data that I've seen about coronavirus in children and coronavirus and spreading. Again, if if evidence comes out tomorrow that trumps that evidence, we change with science. That's what we do. But right now, that's where the science is. And so that is the, the only point we have to clarify is that if tomorrow it came out and said, hey, all the things that we thought we knew about coronavirus today are wrong, Here's the new science. Here's what we know. Well, then we change our opinions. That's how you move forward. But as it is right now, I still think that's the right opinion. So we're just going to make that little point of clarification because it is important that people understand that just because you hold an opinion today doesn't mean you won't hold a different opinion in the future. Changing your ideas with evidence is a good thing. Right now, the evidence is on my side that we should open schools if it starts to be that it looks like it's a bad idea, that it turns out it's a good way to go and further community spread, for example, or that kids, turns out they get more sick than we originally thought, then we change with the science. But anyway, we're going to leave it that there because we're going to jump into today's podcast because there's a lot of stuff to cover on today's podcast. We are going to be talking about something that should be more troubling than it is. You're starting to see it bubble up a lot more in the media today, Um, but it's been going on for years and it should be troubling to people. And that is the fact that it is the year 2020 and there are still concentration camps in the world today. And that is, that should be incredibly troubling. We're going to talk specifically about China today and the fact that China has been funneling its Uyghur population into re-education camps for years at this point. Now, a lot of people are probably not aware, don't know anything about this issue, but we're going to go over a little bit of history here. First of all, the Uyghurs are a Muslim, they're a Turkish really, a Turkish ethnic minority group, mostly Muslim in China. There are about 11 million of them. The Uyghurs speak their own language, which I'm told is similar to an Uzbek, basically. And most are Sunni Muslim. Most of the Uyghurs live in northwestern China. Um, in a region called Shaoxian, I believe is how it's pronounced, Shaoxian. I've heard it pronounced a couple different ways, but I think that is the way that it was pronounced most often. And in the last few years, one to three million of that 11 million Uyghurs have been interned in so-called re-education camps by the Chinese communist government. This is the largest mass internment since World War II. Now, it's, it kind of was getting a lot more coverage this week because there's some drone footage that was smuggled out of China that showed blindfolded, handcuffed men being pushed onto a train headed to camp. Now, for those people who grew up post-World War II era, this is the never again that we were talking about. Now, when, when we talked about the Holocaust, when we talked about never again, we were talking about Jewish people, but... More to the point, we were talking about we should never let anyone be exterminated en masse. And watching videos of blindfolded, handcuffed men being pushed onto a train headed to a concentration camp is a little bit too reminiscent of Auschwitz for anyone with even a decent amount of historical knowledge. And it should be troubling. And it did trouble people. There, There have been... A lot more news reports popping up about this this week. I know earlier this year, the New York Times ran a couple 
articles about this and also a couple of episodes of the daily about this as well so it's been on going it's been bubbling up more and more now the Uyghurs once they're at these quote-unquote re-education camps they are forced to undergo psychological indoctrination they're fed propaganda by the Chinese Communist Party they have to praise and worship the president and historical figures of the party there have been wide reports of torture, such as waterboarding. One of the camps ordered 15,000 cattle prawns, so cattle prodding people, as well as widespread sexual abuse among women in the camps as well. One of the most troubling bits about this is that the, this is uh, there is a mass sterilization effort that the Chinese government is attempting to force upon the Uyghur population. So they have been forcing the women to take birth control and and having forced abortions. Then they're putting them in the re-education camps if they resist these efforts. And we have some numbers to really back this up. Uh, Between 2015 and 2018, the population growth of that region of China fell by 84%. So over the past three, or between 2015, 2018, over that three year period, the birth rate among the Uyghur population fell 84%. This is due to, again, forced sterilization, birth control, forced abortions. They're, they're, if you're, they do mandatory checkups of people, and if the women are found to be pregnant, they perform a, an abortion on them and Again, forcibly, it doesn't matter if you want the baby or not. They, they, it does not matter to the evil Chinese communist government. 80% of all IUD placements in China were performed in this region, despite it accounting for 1.8% of China's population. So, 80, so they're, um, besides the birth control, they're also just placing IUDs in women. And again, 80% of all of them in China were placed in 1.8% of the population. So that says something right there. The the people in the camps themselves are you being used for forced labor. So we have basically 3 million people, 3 million Muslims in China who right now are being forced to basically make your sneakers. They're Um, The last I saw, 80 international companies that have manufacturing that come directly out of this region of China. That includes some Nike companies. So the the um, people at Nike who are incredibly woke on politics here in the U.S. are still using slave labor in China to manufacture sneakers. So that's excellent. Um, And I, I can't remember all the other ones off the top of my head. But again, there are 80 international brands that have shipping that comes directly out of that region of China. So there have been some efforts I've seen in the past couple weeks to start some boycott movements and some transparency um, some transparency among those companies so that if they have manufacturing, they have to demonstrate that they're not actually using forced labor to make their products, which I think is a good thing. I think we should all be a little bit accountable for that. Outside of the camps... China has developed what is probably the most advanced police state in the world right now. So the New York Times described their surveillance system that they have in place in uh, that region of China. So the residents have to scan their identification cards to get on the trains and when they're going on the roads in and out of towns. They have facial recognition technology that tracks residents' movements. They have cameras everywhere. Uh, the government took blood and DNA samples from everyone in the region under the mandatory checkup, quote unquote, a mandatory checkup uh, justification. Police can confiscate phones and they download all the content and they go through it. And if you have anything that you're not supposed to have on there, they send you to a camp. And if even if you don't, they use then your cell phone to track all of your movements. They've confiscated passports from everyone in the reason, uh, region. They, do, they no longer allow Muslim baby names. They have bans against long beards. They have bans against veils. They have basically, uh, they basically instituted what is the ultimate 1984. They, they track everyone's movements constantly. 
and this is how they've managed to sort of clamp down on the population there. They know where everyone is at all times. They have the technology. They and they have perfected the technology to do this, and the authoritative government of China is not opposed to using that technology freely. So they they have made this the most advanced and repressive police state in the world at this point. One of the most troubling things about this entire uh, entire thing is the, and not that the entire thing isn't troubling, but they have a program where the Han Chinese men were being sent to sleep with women whose husbands were detained in the camps. This program is known by the Communist Party as the, quote, pair up and become family, end quote, program. They... This is, uh, again, they're attempting to integrate the Uyghur population in with the Han Chinese by basically using systematic rape against Uyghur women whose husbands are being detained against their will in a forced labor camp. Think about that. That's happening right now in China. Look at the any of the products that you have in front of you and see how many of them come from China and then just wonder to yourself how much of your life is currently put together by slave labor. It is incredibly troubling when you think about it in that term. You, you, you see a, a sticker, a tag on a shirt that says made in China and right now, because that, that area of China particularly is part of their main cotton exports. So a lot of their cotton products come out of that region of China. And look at all the cotton products you have that say made in China on them. They don't tell you the region. Maybe that t-shirt you're wearing was made by a Muslim man in a camp against his will whose wife is currently being raped by the Chinese Communist Party. That's a very troubling thought. And we need to... This is, this is the time we always talk about boycotting corporations for whatever sort of, you know, they're not woke enough, whatever nonsense we, we are, we're protesting that day. This is something we should actually be upset about. This is, this is incredibly troubling, all, all this stuff that has come to light of these leaked uh, party documents from Chinese officials. This is, it's very, it's very sick stuff. So in, initially the Communist Party denied that these camps even existed. They said, no, they don't exist. This is propaganda by the West used to discredit China as a, our, and, and disrupt our economy. Then they said, oh, they exist. This is where they're at now in their, their denial. Oh, they exist. Yeah, oh, no, these camps. We thought you were talking about different camps. We, we don't have any labor camps. Well, we have our re-education camps. See, they're, they're, and this, is, this is actually the line of rationale that they use. They, th what they're doing, they're voluntary, first of all, and they're, they're merely vocational centers. They're teaching job skills to people, and, and they're helping us fight extremism in the region by, by helping people to de-radicalize. That's all they are. They're, they're vocational centers. They're, they're fighting extremism in the region, which, by the way, doesn't really exist. There have been some low low level terrorist activity in that region years ago but nothing that would justify anything even remotely like this whatsoever so here's the bit that is the problem so we know all this we know all this we know about the forced labor we know about the systemic sterilization and the rape of women in the region who aren't sterilized. We know about the propaganda, the torture. We know all this is happening. And what has the world done about it? And the answer is not enough. Not anywhere close to enough. The United States, uh, the United States imposed some sanctions on some of the Chinese officers who were in charge of the region. And they punished some of the companies that uh, have been found to use Uyghur forced labor. The U.S. blacklisted 11 Chinese companies that were accused of violations, of human rights violations. The U.S. Customs seized 13 tons of products made from human hair at the border 
in the past couple months that have been suspected of being forcibly removed from Uyghurs who are currently in the camps. So we have seen pictures of concentration camps from World War II. And you see pictures of skinny Jewish people with shaved heads wearing the quote you know the striped pajamas. And those pictures make everyone incredibly sad because they're they're terrible. It's awful. It's one of the worst things that's ever happened in human history. It's happening right now. Now they're not it doesn't appear that they are attempting to forcibly exterminate the Uyghur population like the Jews were exterminated. But there have been plenty who have disappeared. And we know for a fact that they are being used for forced labor. They are being sterilized. The, these are terrible, terrible things that are happening right now. So the world needs to come together here. The world needs to hold China accountable for this because this is not acceptable. China wants to be in the League of Nations. They want to they want to play ball. They want to pretend that they are as civilized as the rest of the world. But you don't get to have the benefits of being welcomed into the world with open arms while you do things like this. So this is this is where something like the United Nations should shine and do something. But the problem is is that what we're seeing right now is a lot like what happened in Bosnia in the 90s. So Bosnia in the 90s, there was a genocide in Bosnia in the 90s. 8,000 Bosnians were, were killed based on their ethnicity and based on their religion. And 20 to 30,000 other Bosnians were displaced from Bosnia. Now this happened while the United Nations knew that it was happening and handcuffed itself to do anything about it. They don't want to, inter they, their reluctance to be interventionist is a, a giant problem. Now, I'm not advocating, we shouldn't, we can't attack China like we could have attacked Serbia. China is one of the largest militaries in the world. They're one of the biggest economic powerhouses in the world. They're arguably the number two biggest economy in the world, though a lot of that, their economy is, I think, falsely propped up by some of their shady practices but we're, I'm not advocating that we should go and fight China but we could we could do to China what we did to Iran which is impose sanctions on them and get the world to band together to stop China China all China has is the fact that they're a, a major exporter and a major exporter and importer they import a lot of goods they export a lot of goods okay well if the world were to actually do its job and band together and say you're not allowed to you're not allowed to forcibly intern people then we could maybe make some changes in china but the world's not doing that and it's it's just like bosnia where everyone we sat idly by and watched people just get slaughtered in my lifetime i'm i'm almost 30 in my lifetime we have there have been a number of genocides there was one in bosnia there was one in rwanda somewhere between 500,000 and a million people were killed in Rwanda, mostly with machetes. There was Darfur, something like 400,000 people died in Darfur. And these, this is since I've been alive, these people who have been killed, the, these genocides that have happened. And what we need to do today is we need to say that Never again really should mean never again. Now, it's possible that the world didn't know that this was happening. It's been going on for years. It's possible the world didn't know. But we know now. And we have a responsibility to... It. If globalism is ever supposed to have any merit whatsoever... Now, I, I believe that nations are important. But to foster a good community of nations which should be what globalism is about more than anything else is is fostering harmony among nations so that we can work together if if that has any value if that has any meaning whatsoever what that has to mean is that you your neighbor doesn't just get to do whatever they want within their country now 
You don't get to go and dictate the laws, the customs, the religions. You don't get to do that in countries. But you do get to say you're not allowed to murder people in your country based on their ethnicity or their religion or their culture, their practices. There is something to that. You don't get to just commit a genocide. That is something that, you know what, we do get to say no to in other nations. There's that libertarian philosophy that I always believe in which is that libertarianism is the ability to wave your hands freely, provided you don't slap someone else in the face. Well, we can practice that on a national and international level, which is to say that a country can do whatever they want. We don't care. Run your country however you want. But you don't get to massacre, intern, commit genocide. You don't get to do this against people in your country. I don't care what your current government thinks is appropriate and the mass sterilization of women is not appropriate the imprisonment of men for their religion it's not appropriate and this meets the definition of genocide so i think what the united nations and what the u.s needs to do is come out and formally declare this a genocide and let the world know that currently today right now china is committing a genocide against the weaker population they are committing a genocide against muslims in a, in a country that is pretending to be open and progressive, they are, they are the most authoritative, uh, authoritarian government in the world. And this is just more uh, another demonstration. You know, we had Hong Kong to complain about earlier this year. We still do. The, a Chinese, the Chinese just disrespecting the pact that they made with Hong Kong and the rest of the world about how they were going to treat Hong Kong, just not caring what everyone else says and just doing whatever they want about Hong Kong. We all got upset. I did. Everyone does. Everyone except the NBA. The NBA is like, hey, you know, it's just Hong Kong. Who cares? We got to watch our Chinese market. But everyone else got upset. I know I did. I don't like it. And we, uh, but this is, this is a, about a thousand times worse. This is, this is in much worse, and we can't just stand idly by. We shouldn't. Now, how do we make an impact on an individual basis? That's a hard question. You know, it, it is a hard question. Be responsible with what you purchase, but even that is, is difficult to do. It's hard to... I know people, I know a, a lot of people who try to, for example, buy American products. And that's, that's nice. It is difficult for people. It's more expensive. And it's more expensive because we don't use slave labor in the United States. We have unions in the United States that make labor costs more expensive, which makes products more expensive. I understand. Not everyone can afford to buy American for everything. You don't have to buy American. Just don't buy things made in China right now. Try not to. It's the, o- the only thing we could do on an individual level. But to ask your... Write your congressman. Give him a phone call. They they hold the government, uh, our government, responsible for declaring this a genocide like they should. Don't be afraid to piss China off because you want to. This is the part where I'm going to criticize Trump for a second. It seems like he's more interested in making a trade deal with China than being honest about what this is. Now, he has been incredibly hard on China in some regards. He was very lenient, I thought, at first about some of the things they were doing because that's kind of that's kind of what he does. He he's very personable. He'll be like, "Oh, I love the president of China. He's great, and uh, everything's great, and we're gonna make a deal." And I get that. That's his business savvy. But and he's been, but he's recently been incredibly hard on China, and I hope that continues. And I hope that the next step is formally declaring this a genocide so that we can at least put a name to what we know is happening in China right now. And like I said, everyone, keep look into it. Keep it on top of it and make an effort maybe. Again, it's hard, I know. Make an effort. Buy, not, I'm not going to say buy American, though you probably should, but buy from anywhere else that's not China right now because right now at least we know that China, China is using slave labor. China and Qatar, but that's a different story. Don't don't buy anything made in Qatar either. Um, I think we're gonna leave it there for the day, and I hope everyone has a, a great day. Again, you know, it's hard to talk about issues like this that don't have.
cut and dry solutions. But it is important to be educated on the subject to at least know that it's happening. Because it's important to have, to know your, your bearings in the world and also to appreciate your station in life. We were all born in America. Things aren't perfect here, but at least we're not being used for slave labor right now today. You know, you were born in a time, in a place, in a country that is more free than anywhere in the history of the world. And you have more options to do whatever you want than any time in history. It's the best time ever to be alive. And we should all appreciate that just a little bit. I think we're going to leave it there today. And no, uh, no other questions on the podcast last week. I think we cleared that up just a little bit. And no book of the week today. So we're going to leave it there. I am Tyler Cressman. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you later.